they're like, look, Jeff's holding hands with someone. Like it's people ridiculous. are people are out of their then, mind. If you really wanted to cheat, you'd be a little bit sneakier than that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yay networks. Hey guys, welcome episode 11. I say this every time. I can't believe we're already on episode 11. It's gone by pretty quick. Thank you for the DMs, the comments. I say this every time too. Um, on my Instagram, thank you for downloading, liking, and subscribing and listening. Um, you and I have also said this as well. So many people that you don't even think that would listen to this podcast listen. And it's like the best feeling when they come up to you and they're like, oh my gosh, I love the part when you said, and you're like, oh, you like it. I don't know. I just want this podcast to be a feel good podcast. Yeah. And look, you're even getting yourself done up for this podcast now. For, for those of you who can't watch and just listening, Jordan did her makeup. I did. It's Friday. Well, normally I do my makeup on Friday. I'll do my hair and makeup on Friday because we'll go out and have beers or go do something. But Lawson has an early game. And last week <laughs> it was my friend's birthday and I wanted to stay out later. And you were like, you were mad that, uh, that well, it's because Lawson didn't go to bed early. And I'm like, well, you could have taken the kids and gone back home, but you wanted to stay out and have drinkies too. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, but he stayed up too late, so we can't get crazy tonight. And we didn't drive with our kids. We, this place we walked to, just have to cover ourselves. There you go. Because you know somebody's going to throw something in there. Yeah. Speaking of drinking, <clears throat> did you drink one of these yet? This Freshka? Okay. The peach? It's like the most delicious drink in the whole world. I'm going to be honest. You don't the, like it? So, these soda waters, they hurt my stomach. Oh, man, I love fresh Every stuff. time I have Peach. a soda water, it, like, I don't know what it is. It makes my stomach hurt. Really? Yeah. Like the bubbles? It's yeah, to I don't like it at all. And it, it every single time, I've done it three times, and I've tried that one. Then you have two other different types, and I've tried them, and every time my stomach feels icky. So right now I got water in here. Are we going to turn it up a notch later, or is this, is this as good as it gets for tonight? I think you want to... Mm. No, you know, like those nights when you're kind of like in between, you're like, should I? But then the next day you're like, I, I didn't need to do that. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, like last night we had some drinks. So no, I don't think. I, I think we should wine. just do movie night. What movie? Your movies stink. Your movies stink? No. What are you talking about? They're awesome. Anyways, what are we talking about today? We're going to roll into some stuff? Yes. So <clears throat> I normally pick the topics and then Jeff will... You're like, no, I don't want to talk about That's that. That's not true. I just roll with the punches. Yeah. I let you do Yeah, but you do some of them. You're like, no. Um, yeah, because I saw a study today. It kind of gets into our thing. I saw a, uh, a study uh, on the news that said happy hour, speaking of drinking and stuff, happy hour has gone way down. Like businesses go out with their coworkers and stuff and have drinks, and it's way down. Because I it used to be like Friday, it's happy hour. Let's go have a drink with somebody from work, yeah. you know, and have some laughs. I don't. I don't know what's going on in the culture. Is, is Are people getting healthier or are people scared to go out and have drinks with their coworkers now? It could be that. Or is it a seasonal thing? Like summertime is kind of going over, but I feel like fall people go out more too because... Yeah, there's football on. Yeah. I, I For me personally, I don't know. The study doesn't say. But for me personally, I think it's because of the climate we're in with yeah. like coworkers. I know I work in an office and they have... We have regular meetings like about like, you know, not, you know, like HR stuff, right? Like how to talk in an office and what's offensive to some people. And people are really offended these days by everything. And I don't think I used to go out and have beers with like my coworkers on a Friday, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that it kind of bonds you, right? Just to go out and have a couple of beers, not smashed or stay out all night, but just, you know, a happy hour drink. Like we're talking not about not talking work, just having fun, right, which is good because you don't, yeah. you, you see all your coworkers on, you know, a business level and it's nice to go out and let loose a little bit, you know, just with a couple of beers. But I think now people are scared. If you say something, you tell an off color joke, you get drunk, you know, it's like, or you can't if, be around that. Or like, if everybody at least I leaves can't. and there's just a guy and a girl staying together, yeah. it's, oh, they're sleeping together. For sure. Which, if I listened to every single 
DM, not recently, but Jeff has had a fair, according to Instagram, has For had sure. affairs with all his hosts. I've said that on air to the host. You have. Yeah. I even reposted that. Yeah. And the, I love everybody Jeff works with. All the hosts are so great. You all have that chemistry. I, I love everybody on their respect for everyone. But um, I remember, I'm going to, in some of you who have been following me for a really long time, this was around the time Layton was born. You were still working those crazy hours at yeah. Daily Boss Live. So if people don't know, I used to start at like eight o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I'd have a news hit at like 7.15, do that. And then we would film a 10.30 show to 11, 10.30 to 11. Then we'd film a 12 to one live, one to two live, two to three live. And then we do a 5.30 to six all live. So I would leave the house at like seven and get home at like 6.30 at night. And Those were like my hours. And then if you worked out, you normally would work I, out before. I'd go to the gym at like 5.30. Yeah, you would get up and leave. So um, Leighton would always be up after you left and he would go to bed before you got home. So yeah. like you never even saw Leighton. It would, listen, and I feel like that that's was... why Leighton has a closer bond with me, like how we talked about with postpartum. Lawson ha had a better bond with you because I was, you know, distant. And then you were always working. So I feel like that's why Leighton always has a better bond with me because it was always me. Yeah, but going yeah. back um, before we get off topic like oh, we always okay. do, <laughs> what I wanted to say was, so Jeff would host this access show at night. And one of his coworkers, Stephanie, I love her. She's British. She's so sweet. Um, but that, it was... Um, there was some lady, it was like this lady specific and she would change her username all the time. And she would write me and be like, you're fat, you're ugly. Your husband hates you. He should leave you. He's having an affair all the time. Like that's all I would get. And it's like, and then Tori, Jeff was trying to scare Tori and somebody's like, oh, they were holding hands. I mean, it is the most well, that ridiculous one, That one is ridiculous because I, at work, I, I don't know what it is. I love scaring even my kids. Yeah, but sometimes. it's. But, I, but the video was, I set it up. So me and this other girl, she was filming from her car and I'm like, I'm going to scare Tori when she comes out. So uh, she recorded it and I put it on my Instagram, like me scaring Tori, but somebody took a screen grab when we were walking away. It looked like we were holding hands and then they sent that to Jordan. Yeah. It's knowing ridiculous. that the whole video is on my Instagram, but she, they're like, look, Jeff's holding hands with someone. Like it's people ridiculous. are, people are out of their mind. It, people, I'm like, do y'all really think one, you know, people are looking at you. You know what I mean? Like, cause you, you're on TV here. If you really wanted to cheat, you'd be a little bit sneakier than that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'd I know. be way more sneakier than getting with one of my co-hosts. I don't know. I were me and you, people don't realize well, you and I have such a bond. I know you better than anybody. You know me better than anybody. And it's just like, it just makes me laugh. Things on Instagram that people send you and it, I don't know. And sometimes I think people just hate themselves so yeah. much that they want to try to hurt someone. Because sometimes the stuff people will send you, I'm like, I want to see what you look like. You know, people who are criticizing no, me. No, they're miserable. They're, they hate That's themselves. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. people who criticize me, that will yeah. say, you're ugly, you're fat, this. I'm like, I want to come through this computer and I want to see what you look like. You're probably in your PJs. You don't have a job. And you're behind your computer. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you ever see, I don't know, Sebastian, remember when he's like, Ooh, you're in your basement? Remember? <laughs> he does that like typing on the computer. Him. I know, he's, he's the best. He's so funny. But anyways, yeah, I think the people who write those things on like inst whatever to celebrities or to us, and they, they, I think they're really, what they write down is what they feel about themselves, yeah. but they don't know it. You but know I what I'm saying? But I think if you were with somebody and you weren't secure in your relationship or there were cracks or there was jealousy, I could really see how it would just break someone but up. Your relationship's one thing, right? So that the last thing I want is a an, an additional girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I want. <laughs> I'm good where I'm at. Two kids, one wife. I'm he good. always go I'm he's good. too much of a tight ass. If he had another girlfriend, she she wouldn't even stick with you long. She'd get tired of you. We got the like, no tell motel. <laughs> Holiday. <laughs> yeah. But I think a lot of that, like going back to like happy hour and stuff, 
rumors, office rumors swirl, even in our my office, you know, yeah. like they just, it, you can't avoid it. People just talk, they gossip. Again, they might not be happy in their position, so whatever reason they gossip. But there's gossip. gossip everywhere. But that's the thing too, if you go out for happy hour, you have a couple drinks, you know, people start getting these things in their head, right? And then rumor, that's how rumors start. But I also think it's, again, going back to the climate, because I'm scared of it too. Like, I want to get closer. When I, I'm pretty tight with everyone I work with. Yeah. Not even the host. I'm saying everyone around, you know, the producers, camera guys, everybody. And uh, I love going out and having beers. But it's like, it might, is it worth it? Like, if I have a drink? And the way I talk to you or to my friends isn't necessarily like work environment talk. I'm not saying anything racist or homophobic or anything like that. I think some people just, I'm older, where the way I grew up, the era I grew up in, if you're 20 years old, they, the way I talk might offend you. That's, I might be well, overprotective, but that's how I feel like at my job. This is, you know, do you know what I'm, people are just so offend, uh, just so offended by anything you say, anything. But I feel like, even I'm nine years, eight years younger than you, but I feel like it's it was more when we were growing up, like tough love, like get over it. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. But you're but now you're not allowed to say that. I know, but now I don't. I don't understand. Bosses bend over backwards to make sure you're okay. Before it'd be like, go get out of here. You're fired. We, you don't want to work. Yeah, go. and that's another. You can't fire people. Because of lawsuits, right? If you get fired and you are some sort of marginalized group, which is everybody, right? I don't want to get into the whole thing, but any, women are a marginalized group, anybody, LGBTQ community, a uh, marginalized group, any sort of ethnicity, you're a marginalized group. So if you fire anybody, you could claim that you're part of the marginalized group and you, they get sued yeah. just for not, do, even if you're not doing your job. So it becomes this, thing of like this, it becomes something else. It's not like, hey, you're not great at your job, so I'm letting you go. It becomes this social thing, and then people make money off of getting sued. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm going too far in politically here, but I don't know. It's just the the social awareness, for me at least, is super heightened, very heightened, because I don't want to lose my job over something stupid or a rumor that went around. Do you and know? then you also say, too, if somebody's like, Jeff, can I have a picture with you if they recognize you from D DBL or Big Brother? You won't even put your arm around him anymore. Yeah, you, I you feel keep weird. Your hands, yeah, I do. Like, I, to it's yourself. weird. Yeah, because you don't, I don't know where, like, the, if, I don't know. It's, I do, I'm super aware of things like that yeah. when I take pictures with people. Well, even if we're out drinking and, and you start feeling like, a good buzz, I'm out you're of like, I wanna go home. Yeah, I don't and wanna be you're remotely. Like, I wanna be with, the friends that we have here that you trust. Yeah, that so you that's are true. If we're out somewhere and we're having dinner, I'm like, oh, let's have one more beer or something. I'm like, I start laughing a little louder or something, you know, kicks in, you're starting to get a little buzz. I'm like, let's get out of here. You and know what see, I mean? Because I don't want to, it's so easy for people to take a picture or make a recording and even doctor that in any way they want, right? They only have to show a snippet of it to get their point across. Yeah, and then me, I'm normally like, let's stay, I'm having fun. And, and you're like, let's get out of here. And I'm like, okay, dad. No, I just, I'm, I'm maybe overly cautious. I'm too hyper aware of it, but I, I am really aware of it. I want to get into a little bit more because we talked about Jimmy Fallon last week. Yeah, you know? and we'll take a break. Yeah, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about that work environment with like Jimmy and Ellen and things like that. Okay. All right, Jeff. This is one of my favorites. We all know. I use this all the time, and it's DoorDash. You get a little mad at me because you think I spend too much money on DoorDash. <laughs> Maybe you should just apply yourself a little bit more. I have the monthly membership for DoorDash. You know what has been the most helpful is when you have been working and I have been sick or the kids have been sick and I can't get out and I order groceries. It's delivered right to our door. It's exactly what we need. Like I said, I don't have to get the kids out and run in the grocery store. It's so convenient. And I just, I can't say enough great things about DoorDash. I'll give it to him. DoorDash is the best, but <laughs> I like it when we have somebody in town. I don't want to get in the car. I don't want to go to the grocery store. I just DoorDash, you know, 
it's convenient, it's last minute. That's when I like to use it. I like it on Sundays when I'm hungover and I don't want to go anywhere. Now the truth comes out. <laughs> And it is delivered right to your door. That's another thing I like. You can put on there on DoorDash, either no contact or just leave it at your door. All the dashers, they just leave it right at your door. <laughs> Take a picture. You have it on your phone. You can track when they're coming, how far away they are. It lets you know when your order's been picked up, and it lets you know when it's been delivered. You call them the dashers, like the Swifties? You That's guys are pals? <laughs> you wish you married a dasher, don't you? <laughs> All right, guys, so get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to $20 value when you use the code TOGETHERMESS. That's M-E-S-S. -S. At checkout, limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum, subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TOGETHERMESS. Don't forget. That's Together Mess for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Tell them Jordan sent you. Welcome back. And, okay, wait. So you were talking about Jimmy Fallon. Not right, Jimmy that, Fallon. Is it Jimmy Kimmel or Fallon? Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. There, so I he, if, for those of you who don't know the story, this came out a week or two ago, and we actually did it on uh, the show that I'm on. But Jimmy Fallon, and just like Ellen, they were both – accused of having a toxic work environment, okay. kind of going to what we're still talking about. And Ellen kind of, that stuck with her. But she, I think, um, she retired. I know people right. that this had told me this a long time ago. Like, cause I used to be like, oh my gosh, I love Ellen. Um, I bet her it's so fun to work on her show. This was probably what? 10 years ago and pe I mean it's known that it was a I bad guess work so. environment. That that a lot of people say that. I personally don't know anybody that worked there that and I knew a lot of people in I LA. don't know the person that worked there. I know the person yeah, That's who what I'm saying. There's rumors had of that. Friends there. I don't know a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, I know personally." And but I I don't. I, I actually don't yeah. personally. I know the rumor that you're talking about. People are like I know people who work for Ellen, yeah. and she wasn't great to work for. I've still never heard and a story from one heard, of Ellen's workers. I just heard the rumor. I always heard too because around this time, this is like ten years ago. Like I said, you'd see her show, and it was so fun. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she would be somebody I'd say hi to. And I remember someone I know was like, no, don't ever go up and say hi to her because she is not friendly. See, I, I okay. So that, right. So Ellen's kind of got this stink on her still, right? Yeah. Even though she's retired, it, that's kind of the last thing people remember. Even though she did so her much good for so great. many people. Yeah. She did She gave so away millions great, and millions of yeah. dollars and changed lives. And I loved her Christmas show. So 12 days of giveaway. Yeah. I'm not hating on hey, Ellen. Hey, and at we got all. a free trip to Australia when yeah. we were on Ellen. I, uh, and that was random. That was so random. We, that was, you want to tell that story real fast? Yeah, you can tell it. Okay. He See, was this supposed is, to get this me. That's how we derail. Because I loved Ellen, and um, you were wanting, I wanted to go see Ellen. And Jordan was having a rough time. This is when we were in Los Angeles. Jordan was having a rough time uh, adjusting. adjusting. So I'm like, there's so many cool things to do here, you know, and I know she loved Ellen, so I talked to one of my buddies, Matt, and uh, I'm like, dude, could you get Ellen tickets? What? It just makes me laugh because Matt's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Matt's got the hookups. And uh, so he's like, yeah, I could get you Ellen tickets. So he called me one day, like, this is long story short. And he's like, hey, what day do you want to go? And I'm like, I don't care, man. Uh, we want to go for the 12 days of Christmas. He's like, good luck with that. Yeah. So I was surprising you. I don't know if you knew or you not. Were, it was for my birthday. So it, Was there, it around the November? Date, yeah, the date that you picked wasn't available. Matt called you and said, pick a different date. Right, and, and I go, I don't care, random. dude. it was and it was when Vito and Dagmara were in town visiting Our friends us. were visiting, yeah. yeah. So anyways, we just picked this, I picked this random man. I'm like, whatever, dude, I'm just happy to have tickets. He's like, all right, fine, you're going this date. And I happened to be when our friends were in town, and I'm like, could you get two more? And he's like, no. So they couldn't go. They went to Universal Studios that day. Yeah. So I bring Jordan, and uh, we get in there, and uh, Nicole what's- Nicole Kidman. Yeah, but who was supposed to be on there? Remember that oh, girl? I it like was her a lot. Somebody that I was like, uh. Bleh. What are you talking about? No, you no. Not Nicole Kidman. Stone. Emma Stone. No, it wasn't yeah, it Emma was. Stone. Yes, it was. Listen, I love Emma Stone. Yeah, it was supposed to be Emma Stone. Are you sure? This is the story. I'm okay. sticking to it. So. For real, it was supposed to be Emma Stone. So I remember now. 
And so we get in there and I was like, oh, Emma Stone's going to be on. And she wasn't. And I'm like, oh, she's not going to be here. I'm like, man, I really wanted to see her. And they're like, Nicole Kidman's going to be here. I'm like, man, I was kind of mad. I'm like, I don't want to see Nicole Kidman. I want to see Emma Stone because <laughs> this is important for later in the story. So we get in there and the show's going great. And we're kind of, we're right on the edge, like kind yeah, of we right up, up close. Uh -huh. And we are like seat one and two and I'm on the aisle. So Nicole Kidman comes out and her and Ellen started this vitamin business in Australia because she's Australian and they, I guess they partnered up on it and she goes, well, we're going to give one lucky um, audience member a, trip to, a trip to Australia, you know, because of the vitamin company. And then she goes, you know what? We're just going to give the whole audience a trip to Australia. And we're like, what? And they like opened the doors. It was like the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. And uh, we have so pictures of it. Yeah. That, Australia yeah. Trip. We went. And so all of a sudden the show's ending and everyone's going crazy. It's going bonkers in there. And <laughs> Nicole Kidman uh, walks up into the aisle and I go, cause I wanted Emma Stone. And <laughs> but then when Nicole Kidman came at me, I'm like, oh my God, I love you so much. And she's like, thanks. <laughs> And I gave her a hug like I was her biggest fan. And then, like an hour before, I'm like, man, I don't want to see Nicole Kidman. And She's then I was her tall. best friend. She's super tall. Yeah, but I hugged. I got to hug Nicole Kidman. And we got a free trip, trip to, Australia, to Australia. And we went. Yeah. But going back to, like, the whole cancel thing, Ellen did do a lot of good for people. Right. And I think, I think too, everybody, if Ellen was walking on the street, everybody would knows who Ellen is. And I don't know what it feels like for to get bombarded with people all the time. Dude, but she's probably like, listen, I just want to go to lunch. I don't want you coming up to me. Because some people don't care. Would just be like, hey, you're eating with your family. Can I have a picture? Yeah. And she probably just got annoyed. Or maybe after so many years being on television, she's probably like, I don't care. Like, this is boring to me. You know? Yeah. So going back, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I agree. I'll, I'll get to that point. But with Jimmy Fallon, so the same thing happened. I don't know exact stories or whatever, but I heard, and there is rumors too. I haven't, again, I haven't heard it from anyone specifically, but that he drinks a lot, right? That's kind of his. I could see that. And he kind of came to work drunk sometimes. I don't know if that's He's true. He's late night show. I know. Who cares? But I don't even watch his late night show anyway. But they don't film, they film it in the afternoon. You know, it's not yeah. filmed live late. But that was the knock on him. And he had a toxic work environment. So going to your point, I think, again, I don't know. I'm not making excuses for them or anything. But it's like, I think some of the younger generation, and I don't want to insult the younger generation, they just have a different work ethic. You know, like when I was coming up, people were like, hey, idiot, go get this or stupid. You're late. Go get yeah. that. You know, and it's like, oh, man, I'm late. Oh, I made the boss mad. You're not like I was offended by he called me stupid and I'm going to report him. Yeah. You know, so it's like you don't have that. And not that that's mean. That's the I mean had worked for some assholes. And if I were to whine or complain just their personalities, I would have gotten fired on the spot. They would be like, I don't have time for this. I right. have a business to run. Yeah. And so even and now, again, I might be uh, super heightened with all this stuff. But just having conversations with people that just start and stuff, I, I have a very joking personality. Like, I might rub some people the wrong way. Yeah, people think you're an asshole. Yeah. I, but you're not. In a nutshell. I think I'm more of the... To be honest, everybody's always like, you're the sweet one, but I'm the one with more of the temper and the more of the asshole. You're like the calm one now. We've switched. We have switched. Jordan's I'm just so mean. moody. I'm moody and I'm mean, and you're very calm. I spend a lot of days not, hiding. Because people <laughs> will be like, the way your husband, sometimes like your husband will talk to you. And I'm like, you don't know him. Like, you don't know our banter. You don't know how we kid. And really, if anybody was here, a fly on the wall, it's more so me, not even you. I'm the it, one it, that's That's true. Jerk. That's true. But my sense of humor might be a little weird or like insulting to some people. I might come off I think too it's because you're loud. You're from Chicago. It's like that. <laughs> it's true. I'm not saying I'm not. I, I agree. I'm stereotyping you. No, I, I totally I agree with you. I am loud and all that. And I do. I know I you know, my personality is not for everybody. And that, again, that makes me more hesitant in an office setting to talk to every single one of my coworkers how I would you. 
So imagine Jimmy Fallon times that by 100, times his work staff by a, a couple hundred. Is he supposed to talk to every single person like their family? He so if you're like, want if, to. If, no, because if you say one wrong thing or tell one wrong joke, and you're probably tired, you're like, I just want to come in, do my job, and get, and out, get out of here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're the asshole. It's right. like, because I'm not talking to every single person, but if I do talk to you, you're going to be offended in some sort of way. And if you're not doing your job, I can't tell you you suck at your job because then I'm going to get in trouble. It's like it, the office dynamic. I don't know how it is in everyone's office across America. Like, How is it in yours? Speak for yours. You I, I am speaking for mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm speaking for mine. But I feel like I'm everybody speaking from my point of view. Yours That's isn't all. toxic. Yours is not toxic. No, not at everybody all. But I am along. super aware, like going out now. I, I don't... I rarely, rarely, rarely go out for a beer with people because I'm a little hesitant just because, like you said, if I said something wrong, Christmas parties, they gone. Who has Christmas parties anymore? You can't be that person who gets drunk at a Christmas party and like fall, you know, there's someone always gets drunk every That's Christmas party everywhere. Say, there's always the mess. But the now it's over. You can't do that. Why? Because you're, you're going to get fired? Well, your boss will be fired if he doesn't do anything to reprimand you because he's allowing that behavior. Then if you reprimand them, then somehow you're, I don't know. And so, I don't know. I, again, Maybe I'm walking Maybe you're thinking a, too much about that. You're, you know, you're probably right. But I think I if do. it was a big Christmas party, how are you responsible for that? I don't how know. How is your you boss are. responsible for how drunk you get? They're, that's my point. They're not. But in yeah. this culture, someone has to be responsible. Everyone, I got this new saying, Everyone who causes the problem somehow becomes the victim these days. So you're the cause of the problem. And then because you're starting a problem, my reaction, how I react to it, all of a sudden you're the victim because you didn't like the way I reacted to the problem that you started. Does that make sense? A little bit. I'm following. Are you? Or you it I'm looks following. Like you it looks like your I body's here, but your mind's at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I think your mind's at the bar. You've mentioned... Having drinks. I, don't I might have times. to have a drink after this. I'm going to debate. Let's take a quick break. I might have a drink. I might not. And then we'll come back. Okay. All right. We're back. And I didn't grab a drink. <laughs> um, okay. So I feel like we need to close that. Yeah. With Jimmy Fallon. Well, I'm I just don't, saying. You I just don't... don't ever know what's going right. on. And it's just like if. Whether you're on TV, you're owner of a company, you're whatever, you're working for somebody, we all have our bad days, you know? Right. There's days when it's like now you can't have a bad day. Maybe maybe he got in a fight with his wife one day and you just got him on a bad note. I know I've pissed you off before you've gone to work and I can tell on TV you're still mad because I threw a couple jabs before you left to let it sink in. <laughs> and it's true, right? I, it's true. Or your kids are driving you crazy or you're tired or, you know, I have those moments where, um, I mean, I'm not going to a job, but where I feel like angry at you and I hate you and like I'm mad at the kids or whatever. And, <laughs> and then if anybody else passed me at Target, I might have an attitude with them because I'm pissed off at you. Exactly my point. And yeah. I, and I say that all the time, like, I'm not defending if they are toxic or whatever their situation is, but I am in some way sticking up for them because of what you just said. Yeah. Because you have a bad day and sometimes you're not reacting to the person individually, right? You're reacting harshly because of what happened at home with the kids or you. And I'm like, listen, man, I don't feel like doing that segment. You know, whatever it is, they ask me, wow, Jeff's a real asshole. You know, it's like, no, man, people are, we don't, we're not allowing people to have bad days anymore. People aren't allowed to make, uh, make bad decisions or fail in any sort of way. If, if you do something harsh or that offends somebody else, we just want to cancel them and, and banish them from the planet. All I my, feel like it's coming back a little bit. It is bit coming back a little because the point, last three years were little bananas. I mean, like yeah, bananas. Yeah. I lost some jobs. I'll get into later, but I lost the job, you know, that I had for years. And if people know what job I had for years, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I lost yeah, my we'll job. Yeah, we'll talk about that in another Yeah, time. but it's, it, it is coming back. But all the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my you whole life from. are the best lessons that I've learned from my whole well, life. Well, it's like now with kids, 
I don't know if this really makes sense or if this is random. I don't agree with um, kids in sports that everybody should get an award. If you did great that game, yeah, give them a MVP award that day. But not every kid deserves an award. That's how you want to get better. That's how when if Lawson doesn't do good one game and didn't get an award and was crying about it, that's good. Because then the learn. next day – the next time he's going to be like, you know what? I really, really want that award. I'm going to try even harder to get that award. That's my mentality. And I think that's, we talked last week I about think that's like, more like when we were younger, um, how it is, but with social media, it changes a lot of things. I'll give an example. Um, one thing the other day Lawson said to me, so he watches YouTube a lot. I think a lot of kids, that's just like what it is. Everybody watches YouTube. And he said, uh, we were in the car on the way to school. And he goes, Mom, do we drive an expensive car? And I was like, what? And he goes, do we drive an expensive car? I go, who told you that? Or like, who, where did you even get that from? And I go, we have a car that drives us to where we need to go. And then he asked me about like his clothes. And I go, you get your clothes at Target. You don't go anywhere special. And um, I go, where are you getting all this from? And he goes, can we get a Lamborghini? And I go, <laughs> what? I go, I can't even afford a Lamborghini. What are you talking about? And he goes, well, you should work harder and maybe you could get a Lamborghini. I go, one, Lawson, I don't even want a Lamborghini. I go, I think they're ugly. And I go, and two, tell me where are you getting this from? And he said, YouTube. And he watches, he goes, these, he goes, when these, you said YouTube, you pointed at me and you go, you, and oh, before you said tube, I was like, get the, I would never <laughs> ever say get a Lamborghini. Are no. you crazy? So he said, I, some kid, I have no idea who this kid is. I guess it's some YouTuber that's popular with the younger kids. He goes, mom, he lives in this house and he's got all this money and he drives a Lamborghini and he's in high school. And I go, Lawson, he probably rented the Lamborghini to do a YouTube video. And he goes, yeah, but all his friends live in this house and that's what I'm going to do. And I was like, you're six years old and you're saying all this. We don't talk about materialistic things no, with our kids. No, definitely not. We don't talk about... I'm a tiny. Um, we don't talk about that stuff. We don't talk about, um, you know, buying expensive things. We don't talk about any of that. So I, it just caught me off guard. But I'm like, that's like what six-year-olds are noticing now. Or he'll Well, ask, that's not good either. I don't want him to think material things uh, make you happy. Well, right? I don't I want told, him to have that mentality. Yeah. I mean, we had a talk on the way to school. I was like, Lawson. I was like, that stuff doesn't matter, you know. But, I mean, I know that was random, but I just – just threw me off guard because when I was six years old, I didn't even, you know, I didn't in high school. I'm swear to you, some people might agree with me. Other people might be like, what? Um, I was my sophomore year in high school. My best friend in high school, her grandma was like a fashionista, love shopping, all this stuff. And Charlotte got their first Nordstrom and a Tiffany's. And I told her grandma, I go, what's Nordstrom? She goes, you don't even know what Nordstrom is? And I go, no. She goes, uh, it's got the best shoe collection ever. And I, you know, my shopping was going, now this is old. I think if you're from the South, you would know Hex Department Store and Belk Department Store. Belk is a Southern thing. I didn't know. I don't know what Hex is, but I didn't know what oh, Belk Hex was. Oh, Hex was I like my you. middle school. And then like goodies. Remember goodies? I don't think we had a goodies. Oh, it's like a Burlington Coat Factory. Like TJ Maxx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marshalls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, That's I think kind of like know. where I shot. What, Did what you ever, Do you know what a venture, venture is? Never heard of it's it. It's like a Kmart, but it's called Venture. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never heard of it. Um, but How about Weebelows? What? <laughs> I think that's a store. I don't even know. Well, when I was in school, it was like Abercrombie, Wet Seal, Hollister, like things like that. And if you shopped at Abercrombie... That was, that was high end if you shopped at Abercrombie, you know? But it's just so funny how things change and how I didn't know Tiffany's was a diamond store. I didn't know Nordstrom because my mom never talked about that stuff. I, well, I my mom up, loved to shop. My mom had nice things when she was married to my dad. But my mom didn't discuss that with me. You know what I mean? Like yeah, she, oh no. She wasn't either. like... Um, 
it wasn't until I got older and in high school and people were getting like my space. That's kind of when I was oh, like, yeah. what's this? What's that? Yeah. And then I learned about that stuff. I never was into like like name things. I'm more like, oh my god, I got this on sale and like. It's but awesome. I think from meeting like your friends, yeah, I think your you your friends have such an impact on you. Like you're a lot like your friends. For oh, you saying just me, or are you using that as a no, general statement? No, I'm saying statement? you. Like from meeting your friends in Chicago, yeah, I think they're all like that. Like the town you grew up in, the way that. Your town I, what or is, it just I just oh for don't sure picture, you are who you I, are who you grow up with or your family right. is. So I thought you were making that as a general statement. No, but like kids I grew up with, that's like like I said, going to Belt Department Store. That's like what everybody shopped at. Yeah, it but wasn't do you like, see what I'm getting at? It's like we're so different. Like every just meeting everyone in America, like h- how you grow up and where you grow up, and you come up with different values. So. I'm sure you came up with different values. I'm sure the guy who was across the street. So we all come from these different places, but society wants us all to think exactly the same. And if you have a different opinion than that, because of how you grew up, somehow you're less than these days. Am am I making sense or am I talking crazy? No, I remember when I first moved to L.A., I felt like... It's a different culture. It's so different, and I felt like such a loser because I was like, there are... Uh, women, young young adults my age that I feel like are way more mature and they just even acted older than me. I felt like the way I thought right, but, and the way, it does that make sense? No, totally. So just in that example, I'm using this as a broad example, like, you know, society wants everyone to be the same and we're not, it's never gonna be no. that way. You felt probably insecure and like dumb, right? Is yeah, that, for sure. You know what I mean? So. And then people does, would be. So how do you expect everybody to get along all the time and agree on all the same things? You know, I just. I, and then this there's is what people I think about who time. think they're better. And there's nothing wrong with that. Give that, which that's everywhere. Uh, there's all, and no matter where you go, where you move, there's always going to be a couple of those people that think they're better and make you feel less than, right? Yeah. And I try to even getting like to wrap this whole thing up, like getting back to Instagram and people's yeah. comments. Sometimes when someone says something rude to me, and I'm like, maybe they don't necessarily hate me. Maybe that's their culture. Maybe yeah. they didn't have parents. Maybe they had one parent. Maybe they were raised by someone else. Maybe you don't know people's stories, right? And I, when I do- I do the same. You try to understand yes. where they come from instead of basing judgment like, she's a bitch or he's a dick. Right, and, and then, when it really comes down to it, I try to do that and it helps me kind of rationalize like their statements. I'm yes. like, you know what? They probably didn't, they didn't have any brothers or sisters. They didn't have a big group of friends and it makes me appreciate where I'm at. Like, wow, I had great parents. I had a great group of friends every stage of my life. Mm-hmm. I have a great family now. And uh, you know, sometimes you gotta take the good with the bad. It really and, is true. Yeah. Or, you know, even if you meet um, this is nobody in specific. I'm just saying, like, if if you met like a like another mom and she's like seems bitter, and you're like, well, is her marriage good? Does her husband help her at home uh, with the kids? What's going on? And there, there's probably something going on. And then the other people, I feel like the act um, so happy and so great, and everything's perfect. You mean on Instagram? Just on Instagram or even just wherever you go, like in your city, wherever you live, I feel like if you act so perfect, normally it's not, you know, there's issues. I'd rather someone fake be nice to me than be mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if go you want to pre- if you wanna pretend like I'm cool, I'll take that. Go to the South. People will be super nice to your face. And then as soon as you walk away, they're like, did you see her mom? Her mom <laughs> looked like this. Her sister. Oh, she's put on some weight. Oh my gosh. And then they talk about about and especially like at church. <laughs> church people. <laughs> all right. Well, let's wrap okay. this thing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, hopefully we didn't offend anybody. And we're gonna talk, we didn't we're get gonna talk canceled. behind your backs after we get off this thing. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, people are gonna get off of here and be like, No, you it's know tough. What they just I, said? I think it's I think everyone's kind of thinking the same thing, but it's hard to talk about out loud without being labeled a certain thing. So I don't know. At least that's where I'm coming from. You guys might not right. even relate to this at all, but it's kind of like inside of my life, what I deal with on a daily basis. And when I think about it, not that it like 
And if you see Jeff and he's a jerk, no, he might if, be wise. If you see me, are you crazy? No, you're always over the, overly nice to people. Yeah, because it, when I meet someone, right, and I'm nobody special, so definitely say hi to me whenever you want. But when I meet like a, so like a movie star, I'm like, oh my God, I still remember movie star stories, like hugging Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah. Just that brief interaction, it might mean something to them. So if I'm a, you know, a dick, because of what's happening in my life, you drive me crazy, the kid drive me crazy, then someone's like, hey, what's up, Jeff, can I get a picture? And I'm like, no, you can't, beat it. They're gonna remember that for the rest of their life. Yeah. And I just ruined their memory because I was having a bad day. So you kinda gotta turn it on, you know, Jeff's been driving me crazy, and he's going out of town in a couple weeks, and I'm very excited about it. We're going to end on that note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks Have for Have a great weekend. I uh, hope we didn't offend any of you. Right? What? I said I hope we didn't offend Wrap it any up. of you. I am. I hope we didn't offend any of you and cancel. Okay, like, subscribe, cancel oh. us, thumbs down. We'll see you guys next time. Thumbs up. Yeah.